So hello everyone. I hope everyone is safe and uh, you are utilizing your time, uh, especially for entrepreneurs. It's a very uh, difficult time as such, but at the same time, uh, it's a very uh, good time to do all the homework properly and uh, you know to really uh, consider the model because many times in model what we don't consider is the critical uh, points. We always assume that uh, you know things will be as it is at the moment. So I think uh, we'll be able to realize more about uh, today's topic, um, uh, which is quite interesting as such. Um, in fact, all, in all my presentation, I try to emphasize on the fact, um, you know, when you read something, you get the knowledge, but when you experience something, you get the feel. So I would like to emphasize on the feel part of the whole uh, presentation. And um, please, please uh, do pay attention. And, uh, you know, at the end of every, um, slide, I would like uh, to summarize it in a manner that you get a feel about it. So even though you don't get the whole knowledge, um, which is anyway material many times when you go in real life and you'll get the slides. So uh, don't worry about it. Um, uh, everything for you as simple as it. Uh, if you have any question, please um, uh, keep typing uh, because what I will do, I will uh, try to handle the question um, after every slide uh, so that, um, you know, you guys are with me. And um, it's always difficult to, in fact, virtually connect to people, but uh, the situation has compelled. And uh, apart from this, if you really see, it makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, we are utilizing our time at the same time. Uh, we are optimizing the resources. And it should be like this, uh, because many times, um, uh, you know, um, many times we keep, sorry, keep doing the meetings, uh, which doesn't make um, any sense, but you have to do it uh, for the sake of doing it as well, especially in the big companies. Um, uh, we have a small team and um, I'm assuming that all of you are entrepreneurs or you are willing to be entrepreneur or aspiring entrepreneurs. And uh, I'm also assuming uh, that all of you have got um, uh, technical background. Um, I don't know how many of you have got the management background. Um, so just let me know in case you have the management uh, background as well, uh, because uh, I'm trying to keep all the terminology very simple. Um, at the same time, I'm trying, or I shall try to make sure that uh, um, even though you are coming from the technical background, uh, you have enough um, understanding uh, to go ahead from the management point of view as well. As I told you, you know, when you read, you get the feel, but when you experience, you get the feel. So you are here for the feel, as simple as it. And um, uh, with this, I will start with the uh, you know, uh, topic, which is how to find out pre-feasibility of a project. And uh, normally, um, uh, all the time, I try to emphasize that the problem statement must be very, very clear because uh, the more you understand the problem, the more you understand the solution. So here, what we are talking, we are talking about the pre-feasibility of a project. So I would underline pre-feasibility and the project. Um, uh, so what is the pre-feasibility? We'll see after this slide in detail about the um, uh, theoretical, but yet uh, practical definition of pre-feasibility. Uh, but anything you do, you know, anything you do um, and, uh, before you do that or take that concrete step, um, you know, uh, that step would be called uh, pre-feasibility. For example, uh, uh, I want to uh, really do something uh, or launch uh, one biscuit, um, um, Cadbury actually, before they launched the <clears throat> chocolate, they were into shake business. Uh, uh, so they had to do all kind of pre-feasibility before they even went for the uh, real feasibility. Uh, so pre-feasibility, in fact, uh, in Hindi, you'll call it mota moti. Huh? Uh, so the confidence is, uh, or uh, the standard deviation can be high. That we'll see even more in uh, in the, uh, greater depth or in an explicit manner um, afterwards. But the pre-feasibility is nothing. It is a step before the feasibility because many times we keep talking about feasibility, uh, but perhaps you can just uh, do a pre-feasibility, uh, which is mainly dependent on the secondary data. You don't need to go for the primary data, um, but that's what the pre-feasibility stands for. Project. Um, here, I think um, many of you might be confused uh, as I was when I was a, a young entrepreneur as such. So you need to define the word project. Project can be your whole business model. That is not a problem. We'll even see what exactly the business model is, or what exactly um, an entrepreneur's journey is. But nevertheless, uh, you can think about your whole project uh, as such, or whole business as a project, or you can just carve out one vertical from a business, um, and then you can call that as a project. It really depends on you. Uh, you are the boss. You need to really define. 
but you know the more accurate you define the problem statement the more accurate that uh, the solution statement will become and this is where the whole pre feasibility stands uh, for its importance and uh, in other words actually um, i call this as a skeleton to start uh, and this is what actually we'll be talking um, in coming 2 hours and um, yeah so let's start the journey of um, pre feasibility so let's uh, read it aloud, the definition as such. So a, prim a preliminary feasibility study, or you call it the <clears throat> feasibility study, is a comprehensive study of a range of options. We are not talking about one option, but we are talking about a range of options for the technical and economic viability of a project that has advanced to a stage where a preferred method is established. Uh, so basically, you you have something which is already established perhaps uh, you have a skill to write but do you want to write a novel or do you like to write a um, i don't know a technical paper or or would you like to uh, write in a newspaper or in a magazine these all are range of options uh, you already pose a um, uh, you know technical um, skill for that that is not a problem but the range of options must be there for you and of course you have to choose uh, among um, all this range of option and normally in business terms all the time we talk about the technical viability and economic viability many times people mix it up with the sustainability as well huh? but i tell you honestly this is what the book say normally technical and economic viability but there is a third kind of viability uh, which even becomes more um, how do you say uh, it's even more important and especially in a country like india uh, which is a relationship driven society it's not a system driven society of course uh, i mean uh, system has to be there i'm not saying that system should not be there but relationship is more important over here uh, i don't know nowadays um, i mean internet is there but when i was young uh, <clears throat> i was a kid even to get a simple railway ticket we used to call our uncle and then he used to call someone then he used to call someone and this is how we used to get the ticket done so uh, so you see india is a relationship driven uh, society and that's why the technical and economic and social viability becomes very 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 important um, i again emphasize technical economical or financial and social viability technical viability um, uh, many times is confused with the uh, whole technological and uh, process thing uh, when you say technical everything has to be defined properly in india especially uh, i think many of you are from it side uh, tech side has got another dimension but of course you need hardware as well uh, but when we talk about the technical viability feasibility or even pre feasibility in this case you need to really know the te uh, technical from end to end uh, and which is really possible um, in technological uh, field to know end to end don't assume uh, many things financial or economical um, pre-feasibility when you talk about it uh, fortunately nowadays a lot of other options are um, available um, earlier uh, we used to talk about banks we used to talk about now we are talking about the investors uh, but one of the pre-feasibility factor which many startups don't consider and they should consider is that when at the beginning when you are taking a, a step ahead and uh, you all the time think about funding 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 but i'm telling you any one of you who is not thinking about funding but instead you are focusing totally on uh, uh, your strength and how to encash that strength uh, you are the real entrepreneur funding you need it but for what you need the funding that that statement must be very clear um, the investor will ask you about uh, the feasibility one even before that the pre-feasibility one especially when you go in the mining field uh, if anyone is there from the mining uh, background, then you can imagine what I mean. Uh, if you go from the mining side, the pre-feasibility words really stand big like anything. They don't go for the uh, feasibility, but they go for a big pre-feasibility um, because um, all the boundary conditions, of course, the confidence level um, is plus minus 50 percent sometimes. Uh, we'll be uh, seeing that in detail anyways um, uh, is there the confidence level is very high uh, and you have to zero down to something concrete but um, the economic viability becomes very 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 um, visible in that case but nevertheless I was talking about range of option so 
the range of option when you talk about the financial viability many times when i am defining project as a business idea um, people think about external investor people think about uh, um, i don't know bank uh, loan sometimes or sometimes not not it really depends uh, on your thinking but many times people don't consider the contribution of friends and family please do consider that as well uh, that will be one of my advice even though it's a small one but at least you are not under pressure to perform the you can think of uh, uh, in a modeling it in a very different manner that is not a subject of today's presentation but just to tell you uh, you can perhaps model it in such a manner that you guarantee them that they will at least get the uh, how do you say return whatsoever any fd promise any fixed deposit promise yeah so you can think about in that manner okay let me jump to the third one um, um, uh, social one social one social one becomes very 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 uh, vital especially i am again emphasizing when you are doing any kind of pre feasibility in indian scenario uh, do you have a let's say let's talk about the government um, or if you if you are making some kind of let's say medical equipment and you need some license is it really possible uh, through a single window clearance or you have to run here and there or uh, what you have not done maybe you think that okay uh, it's not a problem you can get the permission but you forgot the timeline so likewise there are many um, intrinsic parameter which you need to consider and one of them can also be corruption you know uh, uh, so you need to be very honest with yourself you need to be very uh, how do you say pra um, practical pragmatic uh, uh you really need to see what can be done and what cannot be done and don't hesitate in taking um, anyone's help when you are spe especially doing the pre feasibility it is always 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 advisable to really incorporate any independent unbiased consultant if possible paid or unpaid it really depends how do you model it out so once again i am repeating this definition and i assume that at least um, uh, you have a little feeling that we are talking about the range of options which is very important we are talking talking about the technical economical and social feasibility so read me uh, let me just read it aloud again uh, the definition of <clears throat> pre feasibility so a preliminary pre uh, feasibility study that is pre feasibility study is a comprehensive study of a range of options for the technical and economic viability of a project that has advanced to a stage where a preferred method is established as simple as it nothing more nothing less <clears throat> you know when you already define a project there are many things uh, you know with a project uh, it really depends what do you keep at the center if i keep feasibility study at the center then there are many things surrounding uh, with the pre uh, sorry feasibility study uh, be it technical operation be it implementation description the research part of the business the marketing part so always there is something called forward integration and there is something called backward integration related to anything um, but here we are talking about a, a specific um, point uh, so basically uh, there is something called uh, value chain uh, so you need like in any chain you have linkages right a lot of linkages are there and when you tie up all these linkages then only you make a chain so in value chain you try to consider or you have to rather consider all the linkages all the <clears throat> dots which you need to connect in order to come out with a concrete thing so here basically in this slide there is nothing specific what uh, i'm just trying to tell you when you do any kind of um, uh, pre feasibility or uh, when you think about any idea you have a first hand idea and then uh, you think mm, this can be done this cannot be done try to think as much as you can try to involve uh, the wider audience huh? um, um i don't know how many of you know osterwalder model huh? uh, if you don't know osterwalder model use osterwalder model specifically which is very 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 important when you talk about the pre feasibility even in pre, uh, in uh, feasibility huh? it even becomes more um, accurate but for the pre feasibility also you can go for osterwalder uh, where um, you don't need to go for the wider um, uh, you know range of people maybe among yourself so what normally you do in Oster Walter Walter model. You have all the matrix written. Let's say key stakeholder. So no, normally everyone, let's say five of you are sitting there, and um, everyone will write something in the key stakeholder. And let's say I, let's say the the team and identifies five stakeholders, and then, then at the end you start voting it. One, two, three. You give a weightage, and you then start voting, and then 
uh, you know, whosoever gets the maximum marks, uh, whatsoever point actually. Um, uh, so let's say I defined a stakeholder as a police department. Um, I can sell some equipment to them. So they will become our number one stakeholder from the customer point of view. So likewise, uh, you know, uh, when you start giving a system uh, to the whole thing, mm -hmm. or when you give this systematic approach, so write this, uh, you know, yeah. I think uh, someone's um, someone has not un uh, someone has not muted. Uh, please uh, mute him. Okay. Okay, uh, let me take it further. So also order is something which is very um, important uh, to give a um, whole um, uh, such systematic thinking, even for the pre-feasibility, mainly, uh, many times uh, people get confused that Oster Walder is mainly for the feasibility one, um, which might be true, but then the audience uh, can be even 100, 200, 300, I don't know. Uh, but when you talk about the pre-feasibility where you, you have a small team, uh, you can use the Oster Walder uh, in that case as well. Um, as simple as it. So what I will do, I will just type it down the Oster Walter model in the chat window. I already typed it down. Okay, so I think now we can start uh, doing a little um, brainstorming um, and uh, just wanted to have one simple, very simple um, <laughs> simple um, scenario. So let's say there is a place A, there is a place B. Uh, we can name it, let's say uh, A is Varanasi and B is uh, Delhi. And I want to go from A to B. Um, may I know what are the options? How can you go from place A to B? You can type in chat actually. What are the options you have? to go from place A to B. So basically uh, we are just, uh, you know, thinking aloud. We are trying to figure out range of options. Don't forget the definition. At the same time, uh, very good, someone wrote train. What else? Think, think, uh, let me see uh, who can really come out with bus, very good. Come out with something out of the box. Flight, of course. Airways, of course. Through flight, train, roadways, of course, roadways, car, of course, car is a new one, bike, of course, walking, of course, huh? walking, running, something like this, yeah, what else? Postal, postal for let, I want not for letters, I mean, I mean, uh, as a person, let's say in person, you have to go from place A to B, or the Varanasi to Delhi, what options do you have? Cycling, very good, huh? Take something out of the box, you know, uh, this is where um, you will start enjoying it. It may sound funny at the moment. Someone wrote walking. Of course, walking uh, sounds crazy for me, but that is for me for a given particular time. Um, you m all must have heard what happened uh, when the lockdown uh, started. Many, many workers, they could not... Um, could not uh, go to their place, so they had to walk. Uh, you know, so it it is also a time dependent. It is also a scenario dependent. Uh, socially, that was not viable. Maybe they had money. Maybe technology was there, but socially, it was not possible. So let me see what more options you guys wrote. Uh, Self-made rocket, maybe. Hmm. Rock, rocket as such, by definition, right now, uh, they uh, they are using it to go to uh, you know go to space. So, but maybe uh, if we change the definition. Waterways, of course, uh, uh, very good, um, whosoever wrote it. Because um, one of the thing in India, we have still not utilized our waterways the way it is uh, in European countries or other uh, part of the world. Uh, for example, I mean, I was living in Germany for many years and I was in Cologne and um, Rhine River was just flowing. It is one of the busiest river in the world. And uh, what they are doing, they are using it to transport the goods. Huh? Uh, they are using it even for the um, for going from Cologne to Dusseldorf to the nearby uh, cities, they are using it. Huh? So, of course, that's uh, very good. Huh? That's one of the unutilized um, and a very, very big um, uh, business uh, field, uh, which has not yet been used, as simple as that. Let me see what else you guys wrote. Combination of waterways and roadways. Of course, you can always optimize the hybrid system. Uh, so basically, you know, 
uh, when you do the sort analysis that is called strength weakness opportunity and threat i think many of you already know but uh, i don't know if you know strength and weakness are weaknesses are always internal and threat and opportunities are always external so basically you need to really optimize this uh, so let's say uh, the your weakness right now um, as such uh, is that you cannot code but you can learn this yeah but the threat is that mm, the threat is that right now covid is uh, there huh? you cannot go out and uh, do anything so it's a very big threat to start something new at this uh, this time of time specifically if you have to go out and do the job so understandable hybrid is always a, a better option if it makes sense if it optimizes your time money resources everything why not someone wrote straight line or through stopover by a combination of many transport of course uh, that can be both already we talked about the river and human drone of course uh, very good huh? i mean uh, air taxi can be uh, there for sure i hate checking yeah of course drone yeah so air taxi in fact drone huh? uh, waterways are used in kerala of course sir hover uh, hover so yes you can do this because then you can utilize the land as well as uh, um, the waterways if you want Yes, of course. Uh, I mean, uh, see, uh, someone wrote about the mythological, and definitely, uh, uh, you know, I'm telling you, in our mythology, there are so many scientific facts. Uh, just because we, uh, our technological, uh, how do you say, boundary is so much limited that we don't realize it uh, unless until we get something in hand which can really validate validate that kind of uh, claim. So someone wrote, wrote that when Ramji can walk from Ayodhya to Sri Lanka back that time. Um, uh, then we can have a thought that's possible at least. Of course, possibility is not a problem. Even in Hanuman Chalisa, they call it yeah, <clears throat> you search Yojan for Bhanu. If you really trans translate it into um, a modern unit, you'll see the distance between Earth and Sun is very, very accurate uh, whatsoever is written. So there must be a science at that time. So it depends on individual. How do you really, um, really uh, transform yourself? Someone wrote like Hanuman when he went to Lanka. Uh, by the way, this can be one of the thinking. We should appreciate this. Um, I know one person. Um, uh, he did his um, aeronautics from IIT, and then he was in MIT, and um, he left the job there, uh, one of the very, very, very reputed job of Boeing. And then uh, he has really devoted his whole life now to really reinvent the Pushpak Viman. Um, he's really in silo and just doing the research on this. And he's saying that he's almost there to really reinvent the Pushpak Viman, uh, which can run only on mantra. But really, it depends on individual. But very good. I, I mean, I really like the way you guys are thinking about the range of options. But you see, a simple problem statement, which was clear to you, that's what I'm assuming, to go from place A to B is making a lot of sense. But to make it clear itself, many times, um, uh, you know, uh, take a lot of effort, especially, especially when you are working in a team. Um, team definitely is necessary because, you know, there is a saying that alone you can go fast, but with the team you can go far and you guys have to go far, uh, spe uh, especially when you're talking about any pre-feasibility and trying to understand. But now I, ca I come back to the uh, word pre-feasibility. So you see the range of options which you guys have actually uh, given me. Um, uh, these are really, really wide. I mean, uh, flight, train, animal cart, yeah? bus, by foot, air taxi, water, whatever you guys told me. I really liked it. But these are range of options, right? Yeah? And now it depends on your, you know, what we talked earlier, technical, financial, and social. Don't forget the word social. I will come to uh, this again. Uh, if you have not understood anything from the whole presentation today um, about the pre-feasibility, then at least you should take home the social feasibility or social pre-feasibility with you. Uh, that itself will make you, um, you know, uh, make you think out of the box. Um, um, as simple as that. Huh? So, uh, okay. Now let's talk about technical. Flight, I think uh, many of you wrote uh, about um, uh, flight at the beginning. Of course, flight, train, these are some of the options. We just come, uh, we just comes like this. 
um, and uh, we think, okay, let's take that uh, um, flight. Uh, if you, if when you were working in a big companies, I was I used to work for Shell earlier in Germany, and I was almost get, getting fifty thousand euros per month, which was a lot of money. Still, it's a lot of money uh, for all my expenses here and there to uh, run around. I never ever thought about um, uh, anything else than flight because um, nothing else even came uh, in my mind. Huh? But when I started my entrepreneurship journey. Even thinking to go by flight was a crime at the beginning. Um, I mean, uh, it was as simple as it. So technically, it was possible. It is possible, but financially, I don't know. Um, uh, it was possible earlier, but then uh, at the initial journey, it was not possible uh, to really afford it. Um, and uh, I really considered that, and I am very honest and very open uh, to accept that I really considered this as a crime uh, because I thought that if I can optimize the uh, time, um, of course, or if I can utilize the time if I'm going by train, let's say, yeah, um, uh, then why not? Why to really t take a flight? Yeah? Um, uh, uh, there, there is something on return of um, uh, investment yeah? and return of time invested as well. There is a guy from I am Ahmedabad itself. So he came up with a very interesting concept of roti, yeah? <laughs> return of time in invested. Yeah? Uh, so you need to really be very sure about the time which we are you are investing. Uh, it is making sense. So that's why you know all these things will come in pre-feasibility itself. So again, I'm talking about uh, technical. So technically, I think, <coughs> except um, air taxi right now, yeah, or maybe by water, we need to see if it's possible everywhere. Um, but the hybrid will make sense then. Uh, we we more or less will agree that even uh, by animal car, technically it will make sense. But at the same time, you need to be very sure um, which service you'll use. So when you talk about flight, when you talk about train, when you talk about bus, uh, uh, when you talk about air taxi, this is all you're renting the service, if you really see. But if you are going by your own car, you are actually uh, utilizing your own utility. You are not renting anything, even by foot. You are not renting anything. Huh? Um, when you're going for animal car, let's say, it might be your or it might be others, huh? but for sure there is an option here. But when you talk about flight and train, do you think there is any option? Maybe even for bus, there is an option that you'll buy. But for sure not uh, for flight and train. I don't think any one of you will buy flight or train, right? You'll always rent it out. So that's why when you're talking about range of options, uh, uh, something sounds very obvious sometimes. Yeah? Uh, but you need to analyze uh, critically as well um, at the same time uh, that um, uh, does it uh, really... Uh, fits with uh, my way of thinking, with uh, my whole um, ultimate goal. So this is a very, very simple example. Uh, and uh, I would say, whenever you are confused, think about just going from place A to place B, because uh, in reality also, when you are, let's say you want to launch a new product, actually, you are going actually from place A to place B. After this slide, I hope um, I have the slide of um, entrepreneurship journey. So all over your life as an entrepreneur or as a human being also. You're going from place A to place B only here. I'm not talking physically, but I'm also <clears throat> telling you um, uh, from progress point of view, I'm also telling from your uh, mental energy point of view, you're enhancing uh, yourself uh, every time. So don't take it physically, hum. but now we should talk about, uh, you know, we talked about the technical a little bit, Financial is clear, you can afford it, not afford it, do you own it or you don't own it or something like this, huh? all kind of thing. But socially, huh? socially, uh, sometimes we simply discard uh, by food, no, 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 animal card. Of course, people will laugh, um, uh, I can't even think about it. Air taxi, maybe in future, I don't know, huh? but not at the moment. Huh? A drone, human drone, not at the moment. Uh, so, but when you do the critical thinking and when you, Try to think as much as possible. Of course, you don't need to really uh, be very theoretical many times, but the critical thinking always excites uh, people, uh, sp especially when you are doing the brainstorming. Uh, let me define the word brainstorming, and then I'm, again, I will come back to this. Uh, in, in an activity like brainstorming, you never kindly mute yourself. Hi. Just a request, huh? if you can mute yourself, it will help me actually to help you guys out. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, kindly, kindly keep yourself muted. If you have any question or any point, 
uh, I'll be more than happy to um, answer. Uh, write it down in the chat box. Um, uh, I forgot where I was. Uh, but um, okay, um, what I was saying that some uh, when you do the brainstorming, in brainstorming you don't come out and at the end say who is right, who is wrong. Maybe idea came from my side or from your side, but the idea of brainstorming is not who is right or who is wrong. The idea of brainstorming is what is right and what is wrong, uh, wrong at, for that particular moment under that particular boundary condition. So keep that in mind. And with this definition, always do the brainstorming. If you start arguing, then that's not a brainstorming. That's a argument. Uh, I'm not talking about a, an argument. I'm talking about a proper brainstorming. 30 lakhs um, students in India. Yeah? So that's their mission. Uh, so they have frozen timeline, they have frozen uh, number of mills, minimum number of mills, uh, and this is their mission. And that's why uh, you always hear the word mission accomplished. You set the mission and you accomplish. Vision is something perhaps you are never able to um, you know, uh, fulfill at least in your lifetime, uh, but you have that vision to do that. For example, <clears throat> uh, for example, I want to um, I want to eradicate poverty in India. That's a definite. Uh, that is definitely a very good reason. But I need to really uh, make a short step and uh, you know bifurcate into a different mission uh, so that um, I really go at least in that direction. That's why when you do any pre feasibility, you'll get thousands of ideas about it uh, about lot of things. Maybe right now people are talking about. Uh, uh, let's say um, hygienization tunnel and just because people are talking and you think you can also make it you should not jump on it you should definitely see your mission and vision um, if you are just jumping just because everyone is talking about it believe me you'll never stand um, uh, apart from the crowd because because there is nothing unique uh, again nothing wrong nothing right but but then you're not uh, you know keeping yourself honest uh, towards your company's goal uh, that's why it's very, very, very uh, important to say no as well to many ideas and uh, in many pre feasibilities actually. Huh? And one of the simplest thing before you do anything about any pre feasibility, maybe I uh, I come to you and say, hey, I have biodegradable plastic bag, and um, you guys are anyway working uh, in this field uh, a little different, but some something like this. Would you like to um, you know shake hand and take it further? Hmm, I don't know. Um, uh, I really need to see how do I define my mission and vision. Huh? Uh, if my um, mission is actually uh, to do the gardening and to really uh, ensure that uh, I'm covering this much of uh, um, earth area to, for agriculture, um, but I'm using uh, so some plastic, etc. So maybe I can be a consumer, but I don't want to be one of their extended hand then as far as the company's uh, mission and vision is concerned. So be very clear huh? uh, when you start talking about mission and vision. Um, again, this all sounds very theoretical uh, many times just because you don't have a feel about it. But these are very, very, very practical um, uh, parameters. And this will help you guys to judge yourself and judge your ideas against several parameters to go ahead or not to go ahead. Once again, you are doing pre-feasibility only to ensure whether or not you have to go uh, to the feasibility step because feasibility steps uh, normally um, encompasses a lot of um, expenses, a lot of manpower, um, other, other bandwidth. Um, uh, so you need to be very sure about it. And this is one of the check uh, which you are doing, um, uh, whether or not it really fits with your um, original company's goal or mission and vision. Okay, let me come back to the uh, innovation part. So. One of the common misconceptions is that uh, people consider innovation as invention, which is only partially true. Um, unless until you don't commercialize it, your model is not sustainable. And um, at the beginning, I told you many times people are also confused between sustainability and viability. Huh? Uh, sustainability doesn't need to be uh, coming from your um, viewpoint. It can be um, also external supported. And again, under sustainability, uh, you have technical sustainability, you have financial sustainability, and uh, you have uh, social sustainability. Um, um, uh, it should not be like, uh, you know, uh, if you want to start uh, 
selling corn to a bald guy. If you want to start selling uh, beef in a country like India, um, if you want to start selling like something which is not uh, liked by people, but you just want to enforce that, maybe technically you are, uh, are cubed, maybe financially as well, but socially you are not um, cubed over there. Uh, so it's a very simple check. Uh, you can say at the beginning itself, sorry, uh, it doesn't fit him. Um, it's not feasible. You really don't need to really uh, go into depth and really consider. So whatsoever you feel is not working, be brave enough to say no. Uh, one of the skill which you really need to learn um, uh, in your entrepreneurship journey is to say no, no, no. That's it. Uh, I mean, um, as simple as it. So you can put this word in um, um, uh, capital letter N no, no. Again, it's very, very uh, simple for me to tell you, but you'll understand when you start um, incorporating this in your real life, when you start doing the pre-feasibility and uh, although you think, once again, let's say hygienization tunnel, uh, it sounds very simple, it sounds um, uh, easy and you think that right now there is a lot of business. Huh? Uh, any Tom, Dick and Harry is uh, jumping, why not uh, me? Huh? I will earn something, but really it doesn't help you. Really it doesn't help you because uh, you need to see the wider um, impact of it. So I think uh, with this, we we are ready to talk about our entrepreneurship journey. Um, how many of you think you think that uh, you know uh, the path of an entrepreneur, or at least you have a feel about it? Okay, just write yes, no, yes, no. Huh? It's okay. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, interesting. Huh? Uh, if you know your path as close as possible, uh, then believe me, you can really go uh, go places. That's really, really uh, as simple as it. If you don't know, then, um, then you're learning every day and that's how life is and that's what I personally believe. Huh? At least I don't know. Um, but nevertheless, let me take, uh, take you through uh, the entrepreneurship journey. Uh, you will see this uh, in many of the books. Yeah? Uh, in almost all my lectures in I am Ahmedabad, I keep this graph because personally I love it actually. Yeah? Uh, there is extrapolation of this graph as well. Um, we, talk, uh, we talk from the business life cycle point of view. We talk from the product life cycle point of view. But let me just take it in a very simple uh, manner uh, before, <coughs> before we make it um, complicated. And then perhaps... Uh, uh, we can do some, um, we can have a little break. It will be almost an hour. Yeah? Okay. So I will talk about the um, industry life cycle or just business life cycle, just um, um, or sometimes very, very loosely, you can say ideal life cycle, etc. cetera. Um, um, what are the states you basically uh, take? So on y-axis, you see profit and loss. Loss is nothing but, uh, you know, negative profit. So I can, I can simply say that on y-axis, you see the profit. On x-axis, uh, you see the timeline. And by the way, this is true for everyone, be it Ambani or be it you or be it me anyone who has really gone through the entrepreneurship journey from scratch, um, they will talk about it. They will understand um, uh, this uh, uh, curve in a manner. Yeah. So, so let me just take it um, uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll go through it and then we'll take a small break and then we'll um, handle some questions before we go to the next step. Okay, so let's start from day zero. So you have some idea you start uh, doing some research kind of thing. And uh, as soon as you start your journey, you see, you start losing money. Um, uh, I mean, as soon as you start the journey, you start losing money, as simple as that. You have to put money, you, have, uh, you need resources, you need, uh, I don't know, technical um, equipment perhaps. Uh, if it's just the tech thing, you need licenses for um, uh, software, etc. But the fact remains, that you start losing money and then you are doing uh, some kind of research. The name research itself uh, talks volume, it's re and then search. So basically you are searching something again and again and again. So that's why the word research is there till a point 
where you say, aha, now I'm ready for development. So I know now what, um, what I'm talking about. Huh? I know now uh, uh, Atlas, I want to give it a try. And that's why I want to go for the development part. And again, you start losing money, huh? even to a greater uh, depth. Huh? You're going further, further, further down, and then uh, you develop it. But as soon as uh, now you start thinking about technology transfer or uh, product launch, you can see the uh, the slope of the curve changes actually. Huh? Uh, you are actually uh, now even uh, spending more money into the whole idea. Uh, more money, more money, more money. And after the product launch, um, uh, the phase is called commercialization phase. Um, there is something called value of debt. So basically you go down and suddenly you are going up. But imagine uh, if you put a ball here, um, and I'm very sure all of you have uh, heard simple harmonic motion or just harmonic motion. So if you just put a ball here, it will go up, down, up, down, up, down it's called value of debt believe me or not almost 99.4 percent of the world's startups they are into value of debt be it from india be it from israel or silicon valley they sometimes you feel good sometimes you feel bad good bad good bad and this is exactly the point where you need an external thrust the thrust can be in many many forms you guys are incubated <laughs> incubated uh, the, the, tr the trust can, can come from mentorship point of view, from money point of view, or investment point of view, from guidance point of view, uh, from facility point of view, um, or it can, can be you know in many 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 forms. But you definitely need the trust. Otherwise, you will never be able to uh, take this slow. Or what may happen if you just want to go organic, the curve will become flat. So. It will not go. It will not. It will not be going like this. It will go like this. So it will start taking more time. So again, more time, more time, more time. But you have to be real, realistic, right? You cannot just um, keep losing time. And uh, when you have a break even, so basically, <clears throat> at this moment of time, uh, when uh, you are sure that now, now onwards, you are going to make profit, um, as simple as it. Uh, you have enough push or you have enough thrust. So there is a concept called push pull. So you needed a push here and then the market pulls you. That's the ultimate thing in life or, or uh, in a life of an entrepreneur, the push pull thing. You need a push and the market has to pull it. And this is where, uh, you know, your journey is really there or you can enjoy your journey as a successful businessman. Otherwise, as I told you, many of the words company, they, they actually die uh, in the value of debt, as simple as it. Or at least they don't progress, even, they, even though they are on the positive side, they don't uh, progress. Uh, if, you are, if they are not open for um, inorganic growth uh, many times, uh, if, you are, if they are not accepting any uh, he help or any other trust uh, which is required. Anyways, so this is in a nutshell, we can keep talking about it because in reality, it is never a straight line, right? Like it's always like up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, sometimes more up, down, up, down. But the nature of the curve remains the same. Uh, that's the whole idea. So uh, um, with this, uh, maybe we can take uh, two minutes of break. Uh, it's almost an hour. But please do let me know if you have any question um, specifically uh, from um, pre-feasibility point of view, specifically uh, from your entrepreneurship journey point of view. Uh, but whatsoever I told you uh, till this slide, be it going from place A to place B. So everywhere you can see, it's just about your journey. It's just about um, your entrepreneurship journey and nothing more, nothing less, as simple as that. So as I told you, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, and then we again start um, with another uh, one hour of presentation. What to consider as a business success? Uh, I tell you, realistically, it's only about money, um, uh, which people talk about. Uh, as a, Kindly mute yourselves. Thank you. So the the question was, let me just see, what to consider as a business. Um, uh, 
uh, success. So you can see success as a business. Huh? Here I'm talking from hardcore money point of view. It's just uh, uh, profit versus time. And uh, this is how the world looks at you, um, that uh, you are making enough money. Of course, if you are doing uh, some impact based uh, or you are leading some impact based company or NGOs or NPO. So over there, money is not the criteria of business success. Here I'm talking about a for profit um, company. So for for profit, the success is just to make enough money. And uh, this curve actually uh, talks about that. Of course, we can keep talking about business success, how to define it. But I would say that it's very much very much individualistic as well. Um, uh, if you like to really serve um, hungry just uh, by cooking uh, food and giving to them, like Akshay Patra is doing, so that is the success for them and uh, that's their business. I mean, business doesn't need uh, to be defined in terms of money as per them because that is uh, the from money point of view. And of course, uh, you know, one of the tougher, uh, toughest uh, part is to keep yourself successful. Uh, so basically uh, what we have not shown here, after this, there is a saturation point and then the curve goes even down. So that's why it's very important that you re reinvent everything um, at the same time. That's why you need to have a, a research department, R&D department. Small companies and businesses cannot afford R&D department. That's why uh, there are institutes like uh, IIT or other research institutes. If we, if you are talking about agriculture based thing, that's why there are agriculture university. Uh, so even though you cannot afford R&D department by yourself, you can take their help. Uh, but that's more about the holistic thinking. Uh, but coming back to your question, uh, business success is as simple as it, financial success. Any question? And don't worry about uh, raising the question. I will, I will be more than happy to um, answer any question related to um, pre feasibility or, or whatsoever slides I showed you. So don't hesitate. It's your time only huh, to ask questions. So the question is, is this feasible to get energy at the uh, product launch? So to cross the valley, if yes, uh, what can be a way to get the energy at the product launch? So basically what you are talking, you are talking about changing the slope, nothing else. So if you can see my um, uh, cursor, so from here, you want to flatten it actually, yeah? of course, but you have to the curve will remain like this. The nature of curve will remain like this. The only thing is that you can flatten it a little bit um, or as much as possible and then you go up. So basically it never happens, it never ever happens. Uh, even with the big companies, it never happens. Um, uh, let's talk about uh, Pulse, uh, this um, uh, candy. Um, they did a big, big, big pre-feasibility uh, in Gujarat and um, uh, then they got a very good, um, um, how do you say response? And then they did a pre feasibility, um, uh, not even the feasibility, huh? um, they did a pre feasibility uh, all over uh, India, and then they did a feasibility, and then they launched a uh, product. But um, uh, it took a lot of time for them to uh, incorporate in a proper supply chain or in the uh, mainstream supply chain. Uh, so, so, all this thing actually um, incurs a lot of money, right? So, what I really mean is that when you are going down, so basically you are incurring loss, it's just the uh, negative profit or is the loss vertical, the Y vertical. Uh, so if you want to flatten it, I at least, um, uh, you know, uh, it's not so straightforward. Uh, let's talk about Windows, for example. Windows uh, 8, I know when I was working for Shell, Shell was one of the, um, uh, one of the participant to develop Windows 8. So they were supposed to get the Windows 8 as soon as the product launches. Huh? So basically um, with Microsoft, then as soon as they launch, uh, the curve should be flattened and then it should go up. 
So they try to make it flatten because uh, they did the pre-booking of such kind of the such kind of product. They try to get um, the investment from the strategic partners who can be their customer. Uh, but that altogether is a different story. But nevertheless, the nature of curve will remain same. And uh, I don't think you can skip it. You can only flatten it. And uh, then you can get this uh, success as a business uh, very fast. Uh, but um, yeah, that happens rarely to be very honest. Uh, it's possible. I'm not saying it's not possible, but, but it really depends um, on the product. It really depends uh, uh, on the kind of goodwill you have in market. Uh, it really depends um, how good pre uh, how good your pre feasibility and the, then the feasibility is. As I told you, um, Microsoft tried to gate investor in the form of the customers um, uh, who could actually buy their product and that was one of the very good strategy from uh, a very intelligent strategy from the Microsoft. Um, uh, so if you are talking about such kind of thing in that case also you can flatten the curve but you can never skip the curve or uh, this uh, value of this. And uh, uh, many of the uh, actually sorry go ahead. Uh, yeah sir actually sorry for like uh, asking you via mic. So actually, what I wanted to ask is, sir, uh, what if what if just someone gets some sort of funding at the product launch, uh, and I just wanted to ask that uh, is this possible to you know just reduce the time of oscillation in the value of death rather than not like you know rather than skipping it, uh, we can just do it like uh, we can just cross this value of death in a one shot short thing. That was my motive for the question. Okay, got it, got it. But that's what I was saying. Of course, fair enough. Uh, so that's what I was telling you that when you are in, you, you are here in the valley of death, uh, you need a push, you need a thrust, huh? And the thrust can be there from um, you know in or in many ways you can get the thrust, be it in the form of the money. Uh, but even though I give you the money, um, enough money. Um, one of the question which I ask to many um, you know aspiring um, entrepreneurs which I have not asked you guys today because that's not the, um, um, uh, what is a topic today. Uh, but I ask that if God is there in front of you and if he ask you, ask me one thing and I'll give you, so what will be the one thing? And believe me, 99.9% uh, people are not able to answer this very clearly. What is the one thing? So let's say even though you get the money, let's say you get enough money, and uh, that is one of, that is one of the mistake many companies do that they raise a lot of fund in the series A itself and they do they are not able to perform and in series B then they simply go flat. Huh? Um, so uh, funding is funding can be one of the criteria but it's not the only criteria. That's why the holistic approach is very much um, important. That's why you need to be very clear about your pre feasibility and what exactly do you require. Um, there is a company called Number Nagar. I don't know if you know. It's a startup. Huh? Um, uh, they do. They are into um, uh, edutech in educational uh, technology field. And um, uh, what they did, uh, they 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 asked Times Now to be one of the investor. So Times Now said, okay, um, I can be one of the investor, and I will give you two crore. But I will not give you in the form of money. What I will do, I will give you enough advertisement in times now equivalent to um, uh, two crore so you can choose the slot so you see they didn't get the money but from holistic point of view one of the factor was uh, that people see their name uh, and they say aha uh, i want my uh, children to really um, use number nagar or their technical skill to really um, uh, push this so I don't know how many of, see, uh, of you have seen the Mandagar advertisement, but nevertheless, let me just tell you. So that was one of the things that was not in the form of finance, but it was equivalent to that. So you need to really, uh, you know, incorporate or you really need to analyze first in the pre feasibility and then in feasibility, what are the factors which will affect your um, thrust. So the thrust factors needs to be um, properly analyzed and then accordingly you need to work on it. So the money is not the only thing. Money is one of the things for sure. I fully agree. But even though you get the money, if you're not able to utilize it properly, that's even the worst thing I'm telling you, which many of the startups have done and they simply go flat. The idea is not to stay here and not to get thrust. So, so let me just put it other way around in a very simpler term. So let's say I give you a thrust. Then you go a little up. Then you again go a little up. Then you go a little up. The idea is that you come to a point where you can be self propagating actually uh, propelling yourself uh, and then the market should be able to pull it uh, this is the market pool huh? 
but if you are be behind this then there is a big big probability that you'll again slide back uh, it's as simple as it so that's why analyze the thrust and that's again uh, one of the idea of today's uh, presentation the pre feasibility that's why you need the pre feasibility uh, and then the feasibility otherwise why do you need but the question is correct um, the answer is very simple analyze the thrust and work on it any more question please Okay, uh, then um, I will take the journey further. I think I got a couple of more questions. Just again, I missed it. I heard most of the government-based startup faces lots of problems. Can and can I know what and how to face those problems? Uh, I, I don't know what you want to ask, but uh, the answer is very simple. Um, normally, I don't like to generalize anything. Uh, if you are saying saying that government-based startups faces a lot of problems, uh, I want to know what kind of problem it is. Uh, otherwise, I will not be able to answer your thing, or maybe I will just give you something general and then you like it, but not, nothing happens in reality. The idea of today's presentation is that you get a feel and then, then you use such kind of um, uh, knowledge um, in reality and then you come out with something uh, fruitful uh, so i don't know um, the problems can i know how what and how to face those problems so the answer is very simple analyze the problem be very uh, concrete in defining the problem the problem can only be under three different vertical as i told you it can be technical vertical it can be uh, under financial vertical or it can be under social vertical so many times people complain if it's a, a governmental um, thing uh, then perhaps they are facing corruption as a problem uh, one of my colleague uh, um, amit uh, in ahmedabad he even teaches corruption huh? so um, so you need to really model it out giving up is not a, a solution at least i don't believe in that uh, you need to uh, really work on it. Uh, you're saying my startup is related to traffic lights. So in order to get the access for traffic light from government, you see, this is uh, this is the right thing what you need now. So you define the problem. So you need to see um, what approach you need to take. Let's say you need um, access for traffic lights from government. Uh, you need to be very realistic in your approach. So let's say I do a pre feasibility. I need to firstly see if the government can even give a uh, give an access to any private company is it really possible um, you can think in a more technical manner and in a more uh, practical mon manner as well so perhaps not if they start doing this uh, then mm, then chaos may occur then a lot of uh, um, a lot of people will say what to do why to do and blah 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 but nevertheless maybe they are doing it i don't know hum, uh, if they are doing it then you need to figure it out to whom did they do and what were the criteria uh, under which they really gave the access. Um, uh, let, let's say ambulances you wrote, which is a which which makes sense for me. Yeah, uh, um, uh, because of the emergency thing, uh, you need to give an access. I don't know how many of you know. Uh, at least in Europe and in India, in all the at all the expressways, you can see there is an emergency line. We don't follow the emergency line, but even in one of the worst traffic in Europe, I have seen people didn't go and use the emergency lane. Uh, because that was for emergency, that was for ambulance, etc. Uh, so what I'm saying that um, uh, you need to really uh, ensure two things: whether it is possible. If it's not, then forget it. If it's possible and it has been done in the past, or maybe in any any of the state in India, then how did they do it? Uh, in government, what I have realized uh, that's my personal experience. Um, you need to do or you need to take <clears throat> two approaches at the same time which earlier I used to think it's never a good idea. So one is bottom bottom up and second is uh, top down. So you need to press or you need to take these two steps simultaneously. Then only you can accelerate uh, the governmental system. Otherwise it takes ages. Um, I will show you one of the uh, one of um, the case study uh, which I did when I came to India and I thought, wow, I have done so good now. Everyone will praise this, that and uh, from business point of view, I'll get a lot of business. And it took me almost um, uh, nine years to come to a point where government finally launched a policy and they allocated 75,000 crore two years ago uh, to ensure that this happens. Um, uh, but at the beginning, nothing happens. It almost took me eight to nine years to come to this point. So you know, working with government might be a very different subject. 
and the pre feasibility when you do with the government my only uh, suggestion would be that you involve one person at least in your team uh, who understands the bureaucracy who understands or who has some experience in handling government otherwise this can be very demotivating and uh, it will kill a lot of time money energy enthusiasm and uh, one of the worst thing that will happen is that you will start blaming the system blaming the system will never help you uh, you will start blaming blaming it can never happen in india so so uh, so don't do this uh, but if you already have any um, uh, case study where they have uh, given such kind of um, uh, permission then it's a good sign actually you just need to understand how uh, how did they really approach and then uh, try to uh, replicate the same um, uh, in your case as well okay any more question please because I think uh, you guys already have a lot of um, uh, knowledge or at least the questions and experience. So even though you share with um, um, or among yourself, that itself will solve a lot of problems. And this is not anything theoretical uh, whatsoever I'm saying. I really, um, I really mean it whatsoever I'm saying, as simple as it. Okay. So I come to the uh, next slide. If you don't have um, uh, any more question, so the um, the idea over here or of today's permission, uh, sorry, today's uh, presentation was uh, to really give you knowledge and feel about the pre feasibility study. But I keep talking about what comes before, what comes after, and you know all this kind of thing. And I just wanted to start with uh, something which uh, makes more sense for you guys, something which sorry, which you can visualize and something, um, uh, you know, which you can incorporate um, uh, in your real life as well. But if you talk about um, AACE, uh, if you don't know AACE, then you should uh, visit their uh, site. It's um, American Association for uh, Cost Engineering. Uh, they do a lot of uh, modeling. Uh, they do a lot of uh, um, cost engineering, etc. And uh, it's quite interesting, actually, um, because uh, uh, the whole idea over here, what you see uh, is to reduce the funnel size, right? Because you have something just as an idea, um, and then you want to really uh, choose one out of it at the end. So it's a big journey, actually. Yeah? Um, uh, you talk about several steps. You s talk about exploration. You talk about concept, you talk about scoping study, you talk about pre-feasibility study, that's our um, that's our point, um, our topic for today, you talk about feasibility study, you talk about implementation, you talk about, about operation, and then finally, uh, you know, you, you go to that point. So there are a lot of steps into it, huh? it's not a single step. The only difference is that you have to make sure that when you go from A to B, then, um, then um the confidence level huh? if you see the accuracy level um, or whatever uh, you talk about here the accuracy level should become more and more uh, or uh, other way around the accuracy level should be more accurate or the estimated accuracy should become lesser 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 uh, in other words the confidence level is very accurate and um, should be as less as possible so if i'm talking about um, uh, let's say one rupee, it should not vary uh, between um, uh, 10 rupees and uh, zero. The variance should not be very high. So, but anyways, so you see, whatever we are talking, at every step, there is a decision point. I hope you can see uh, my cursor. And then at this decision point, you don't need to be really um, uh, emotional. Huh? You can just be realistic and say, okay, no problem. Let's call it a day. Uh, we explore another one, yeah? uh, then you can go back and start exploring something else. Huh? Uh, one of the very, very, very uh, stringent step could be that you say that mm, because of COVID-19 um, situation, I don't think my business uh, idea will work anymore. So I have to really go back to the exploration uh, stage and start from the scratch instead of really uh, being demotivated. Huh? Uh, but that's really one of the very worst um, step but anyway so at every decision point um, if you can see um, we have put the accuracy 
level uh, what's the estimate of the accuracy and this is from AAC not from my personal side so <clears throat> so once again you explore something and then you have a concept huh? and um, uh, the decision point can be whether or not uh, this uh, fits with our mission vision our skill set our um, uh, let's say even in incubation center do you get such kind of mentor or support or something like this huh? uh, so it should be more holistic uh, uh, here as well and then you say uh -huh, okay uh, let's um, go to the take step and here uh, again uh, if you see it's mainly based out of experience and internet survey as well sometimes here uh, um, um, where people are sharing their experience and then you say mm, okay let me just see uh, what kind of um, uh, scoping study uh, I can do maybe some case study is available huh? um, it can never be perhaps exactly uh, the same but it can always be uh, similar kind of thing. Uh, one of the very in interesting thing about the case study, which I personally like, is that you know if someone has already made a mistake, then why should I repeat the mistake? I should simply read such kind of case study and um, um, and um, uh, understand from that. Uh, um, I don't know um, how many of you read the books related to investment, etc. But for example, one of the uh, one of the mistake or one of the weak point in the startup, especially when you have the people from engineering background, is that you don't have marketing arm. Um, uh, you, uh, I mean, all the engineering guys, they are not very good from marketing point of view. I'm just generalizing it. So just excuse me in case uh, you feel you're good. Uh, of course, um, that, nothing like it. But normally, all the engineering guys, they have some very good products and they want to market it. Uh, and they are not able to do this, maybe one or two, but when I talk about marketing, it should be um, uh, in volume, right? Yeah. And uh, so what they do, they hire uh, someone experienced and they want to really utilize the funding to finance this guy and hoping that this guy will bring uh, some good amount of orders. But in many, many, many cases, it has been seen, especially even though you have some good uh, um, marketing guy, was performing very well in some established country, is not able to perform uh, within three to four months uh, in a startup. And uh, and the blame game starts uh, from here uh, because um, you guys want, uh, or you are assuming that you're paying him quite a lot, uh, which is true uh, in a startup. And on the other hand, the guy is uh, uh, thinking that, you know, you guys are not well equipped from technical point of view, which is not very practical in market. And perhaps you are not even uh, listening. So, uh, so instead of uh, the solution is that instead of hiring such kind of people, you just give them um, equity, uh, not the sweat equity, but it can be something like ESOP. Yeah? And you make sure that uh, uh, they feel the pain. It should not happen that uh, they are working uh, without un understanding the pain of the uh, startup. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, what I'm saying that is very important, the scoping study, that is not a topic for today. But anyway, <clears throat> this is a general one. And again, based on the experience, you can go to the pre-feasibility stage. And this is what we are actually today concentrating on. So we are talking about a conference level of uh, or accuracy of, uh, let's say, uh, minus 30% and plus 50%, which itself is quite high. <clears throat> and uh, AC also defines the different class before you um, jump to the uh, final one. Uh, so this falls under um, class four. And um, the estimation um, uh, method, um, uh, it can be parametric, uh, but what I'm uh, emphasizing or what I was emphasizing at the beginning uh, is that um, this is mainly based on secondary data. In pre-feasibility, normally you don't go for the primary data. In feasibility, actually, you do the primary as well as the uh, secondary data, but in pre feasibility, it is mainly based on uh, secondary data, and, um, and then uh, accordingly, uh, you take a call to go to the feasibility stage or not. Um, in pre feasibility, uh, you have several options available, and which is very, very uh, important. If you see, um, every time they are, we are just uh, trying to reduce the options, but um, in pre-feasibility, at least you go in a little um, uh, depth, but based on experience, based on your feel as well, it can be um, um, that, okay, let's select. So let's say from A to B, if it's a normal uh, situation, I will perhaps only select flight 
and or trained. These are the two options which I have uh, in the pre-feasibility stay. Maybe bus as well, but I don't have any other option in pre-feasibility stay. If I have to go from Varanasi to, um, how do you say, Varanasi to uh, Delhi. And the um, and then I see that uh -huh, uh, we have uh, enough money to afford. Um, the train will cost us perhaps 2,000 rupees, flight perhaps uh, 3,000. It's not a lot of difference, but um, in train, I can directly uh, connect myself um, or go to the place where the meeting is happening. But if I go from the uh, uh, flight, then in Varanasi, I have to go from the, my place to airport. That takes X amount of time, and that also involves the money. And then um, uh, in Delhi itself, so, so there are many, uh, uh, how do you say, um, there are many factors. Of course, but you are just trying to analyze it holistically. Okay, this might be the case, this might not be the case, and overall, perhaps 4,000 I will spend when I'm going by um, flight, but when I'm going by train, it's perhaps 2,500, so the difference is not much. It's 1,500, but uh, for me, time is more important because the second day, I have, again, um, uh, another important meeting, so I will be able to really um, uh, you know, think about it. Then, uh, then um, you're talking about feasibility even actually. Yeah? Then again, the decision comes. But this is how you zero down um, to all this thing, the implementation, then finally you <laughs> go and just um, uh, be inside train or uh, flight, and then uh, finally you reach um, Delhi and then you do your work. So that's it. Uh, but again, coming to pre-feasibility, not to forget um, in all these two steps, you try to involve one expert with you. If you have experts from internal source, nothing like it. Uh, but um, uh, if you uh, need someone help uh, from mentorship point of view or uh, on success basis, don't hesitate to take the help uh, because whosoever will come, he will bring a lot of experience. Yeah? And um, uh, this will help you to really go from stage A to stage B, as simple as it. Any question um, uh, regarding um, pre-feasibility here? Because AAC is a big one. Uh, we can keep talking about AAC itself, the way they model it, the way they uh, you know, come out with mathematical modeling of any um, pre-feasibility, uh, but that's um, a sub separate subject in itself. What I would really emphasize is that go to their website. I think it's aac.org itself. Uh, but just have a look, just write AAC or American Association for Cost Engineering, uh, you'll see. Any question um, in this? I'm just um, summarizing. Basically, we are reducing the funnel size. Um, uh, if you can rotate this um, clockwise by uh, 90 degree, uh, you can see it's nothing but a funnel. Yeah? So we are reducing the funnel size and uh, um, pre-feasibility is almost at the middle. If, it, if I can put it in that manner, and the uh, confidence, um, um, uh, how do you say, uh, bond is ranging from minus 30% to plus 50%. Yeah? And um, uh, here you are going with the secondary data only. You are not relying on the primary data. And um, you, sh you should definitely involve an expert. So that's about uh, this slide. Any question, please? Huh? Okay, thank you for sharing. Someone already shared. So if no question, then I'm assuming that um, you guys are understanding. Huh? I'm assuming that uh, you are able to accept at least uh, uh, whatsoever I'm trying to give you. So let me just uh, go to the uh, next next one, because then I will start asking some question, and I would like to hear some out of the box um, answers as well. But let's see um, uh, more about the steps. Okay, uh, th this was um, uh, one of the, how do you say, uh, one of the examples huh? um, and um, from mine, I think, huh? and um, uh, I thought that I will simply put it over here. So the class, what you see at the top is nothing but uh, what I showed you here. Can you see the class? Five plus five, four, three, two, yeah. 
Um, so that's about the class. Yeah? And then um, uh, PFS uh, uh, pre feasibility study, actually, huh? if I go back, huh? uh, you can see the pre feasibility study falls under class four as defined by um, uh, ACE. And then <laughs> um, you can see they talked about the location, they talked about the maps and survey, soil test and geotechnical, like uh, soil bearing capacity, etc. Preliminary only. Preliminary means that um, uh, I don't know how many of you know soil bearing capacity. Huh? So it's about the strength of the soil uh, because the whole building, if you want to make it, uh, so you need to know the strength of the soil. Um, and this normally you talk uh, in um, uh, talk by doing the soil bearing uh, capacity test. Um, likewise, um, uh, here it's written preliminary. It means that there is some generic data available um, and normally you can get this kind of data. Uh, that's not a problem, uh, but when you start doing something concrete, then you need to have um, the accurate data. Uh, that's why you see here they wrote preliminary data only, and here they wrote in the <coughs> definite um, feasibility study, um, uh, they wrote final one. So construction support, um, uh, construction site agreement, uh, delivery strategy, drilling, and blah, blah, blah. So mainly from the mining point of view, uh, but this will give you uh, an overview uh, what exactly do people normally talk when they are talking from the pre feasibility point of view of course this is about on site project huh? uh, but on site project is um, also always like this that there has to be a, a front end guys there has to be a back office support there has to be uh, financial support there has to be uh, all kind of support whatsoever we are talking for um, also in the tech field but nevertheless this will be able to give you some um, some low level or some detailed um, way of uh, thinking what can be done, what cannot be done, what to analyze, what not to analyze. Any question in this? Yeah? Anyway, you'll get the slide and you should um, go through it and then um, you'll have more time to uh, understand. Okay, uh, uh, this is nothing, uh, but um, this is another way of uh, putting whatsoever uh, we talk about here. Yeah? And um, uh, everything is linked to another one. Huh? So what we were talking in the funnel uh, one, uh, this is also um, being shown in a different manner. Uh, so basically you talk about the pre-investment uh, phase, you talk about the investment phase, and then you talk about the operating phase here. Yeah? And um, uh, especially whatsoever we are talking right now, um, uh, we are talking in the pre-investment um, phase where uh, you need to have a lot of studies. Uh, all these things will require a lot of homework. Huh? And then you have uh, uh, all kind of um, pre-feasibility study. You need to also do the um, feasibility study um, uh, preparation, etc. But what I really want to emphasize over here is that it's a pre-investment phase. Uh, don't be confused with investment phase and operation operating phase. Um, uh, that will follow. Uh, but um, here we, we are not spending any money uh, as such. Uh, when you're talking about the uh, pre-feasibility, you're spending more time, you're spending more paper, we are trying to get help. But um, uh, here you don't really pay anyone here. Yeah? You're trying to really um, extract as much as possible without um, involving any cost. Um, only the time is the uh, factor. Otherwise, you are not involving any cost. As simple as it. Okay, so let me go to the next slide now. Okay. So uh, I want to show you uh, this uh, or whatsoever we talked uh, and then I will give you one um, um, one thought provoking case study um, based on one of my very, very old business models. Uh, maybe uh, you can tell me uh, something about it. So basically what we are talking or we were rather talking, we are talking about a concept which needs to be defined. And not only define, we need to also see where exactly we are playing our role because the value chain can be very, very big. But on which linkage are we really playing the role? Are we playing um, the role as a manufacturer, distributor, or uh, as a service provider? Um, um, so let's say, uh, let's say there is some, I mean, let's say there is a laptop, a HP laptop. 
and uh, uh, HP is outsourcing their uh, laptop repairing service. So are you just, you know, catering to the uh, repairing service? So you need to really specify your role and scope uh, in general. Huh? And uh, then you talk about the free feasibility, then, you, um, then we talk about the boundary condition or uh, the framework uh, which you uh, select. And then you have to justify your uh, selected um, uh, stuff. As I told you at the beginning that you really uh, see if it really fits with your company's goal and uh, uh, also with your mission and vision, etc. And then only you uh, then after you take this step, after you define all these things, then you go more concretely um, into the feasibility one, where you evaluate the project, where you um, think about all the um, approval, etc. And then um, uh, you go to bank, you go to government, you go to everyone, you submit this report, etc. And then um, you start implementing it. Then the project management um, role comes in picture, of course, uh, the construction, etc. Even it's a tech thing, then you start coding, etc. And then uh, once you implement it, then uh, uh, you know it's a 360 degree kind of uh, thing. Then you do the post implementation review, uh, whether I um, your project is beneficial or not beneficial, what you thought and what really uh, went good or bad, et cetera, uh, so that for the future you have um, a proper document, you know um, what is good, what is bad, and uh, uh, you can actually um, you know, take a feel about the whole thing, uh, knowledge you have anyway. So, so, so this is about the whole thing, but let's stick to the pre-feasibility, selection framework and selection justification. This uh, this is one of the concept which I floated uh, long ago in 2008. Uh, Modi Saab also talked about uh, this. It's called Gober Bank. Um, at the beginning, everyone used to uh, laugh on it. Um, uh, I still remember my first meeting with Modi Saab and he said, do whatever you want to do. He was in state. I was lucky actually, um, and uh, he was quite visionary. Yeah? So the proposal was very simple. What we were actually telling him, that uh, India has got the decentralized manner of um, cattle handling and um, the supply chain of um, cordon is a big problem. So what we say that let's talk about a concept called Gober Bank. So like in a bank, people will come um, with cattle dunk um, and then they will deposit it in our bank uh, and we'll do a passbook entry. And with this dunk, um, we'll generate biogas and fertilizer and uh, we'll supply the biogas uh, by pipeline. You have to imagine in the middle of nowhere. Uh, this lady became very famous, by the way. Uh, a Discovery Channel also came and um, they took her, her interview and uh, she was almost in all the ch channels. Nevertheless, and then we said that the fertilizer can be utilized um, uh, for the organic um, cropping. And um, uh, what we realized that in uh, Gujarat, this happened in Gujarat, by the way, uh, in Big Budrok. And what we realized in Gujarat, there is something called vermi composting, which is very famous. Although technically speaking, um, I can directly use the slurry coming out of, um, you can see the slurry, coming out of the biogas plant. And this would have resulted in the same uh, thing instead of taking it through the vermi composting um, uh, as such, because it's almost digested. But nevertheless, it still refines a little bit. And this was the whole concept. Um, uh, what we proposed, uh, we proposed a boot model to the government. Uh, it's, boot is build, own, operate, transfer. So we said we will build it, uh, we'll form a committee who will operate it, we will own it till the time we get our return and then we'll transfer it to the uh, local committee. We didn't want to transfer it to the panchayat. But nevertheless, uh, this is the concept. I just want to understand if you have to do such kind of thing, uh, what will be the specifically from pre-feasibility point of view? Uh, let's say I say that, can you do this in your village? By the way, I could not do this outside uh, Gujarat. I tried in a uh, village near uh, Kanpur and the people even came out with gun and everything. Huh? So that was, uh, that's why I'm emphasizing about social engineering part uh, very much. It has to be socially very much acceptable, acceptable. But nevertheless, can you tell me what are the points which you'll consider in pre-feasibility of such kind of plant? I hope you understood the concept. Concept is very simple. I think uh, you know the gober gas thing. Eh? 
you have the dung and you make biogas and you can use this biogas in your kitchen and you, you get fertilizer as well uh, from the plant and you do the um, what do you say organic um, uh, agriculture or the cropping um, and uh, you try to model out the whole thing so you have to model it out technically financially and socially can you tell me uh, what are the questions normally you'll ask or you'd like to ask from pre feasibility point of view don't forget uh, what we thought today or uh, what we talked about today um, uh, you need to consider all this point uh, if you can answer, I will be more than happy uh, that at least you got the gist about the stuff which you are talking about it. And it's more about the systematic thinking now, more about the feel as well. Huh? So what are the points which you will consider at first when you want to implement such kind of plant? Very good, land. Uh, just to tell you, um, 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 we took the land from Panchayat, uh, the land used to belong to Panchayat um, uh, and um, uh, the committee which we formed, uh, the committee used to pay the rent for the land, but the land used to um, uh, be of Panchayat. Very good. Land. What else? Come on, think about it. Huh? Do you know what's the, uh, what's the whole uh, war nowadays uh, all about? It's all about the raw material. Any war you think, land is feasible for environmentally, socially, social acceptance. Social acceptance is a very wider term. Um, I will talk a little bit about it, but very good. But I, I would like to know understandable technical acceptance, financial um, uh, viability, and even acceptance if they can pay and if they cannot pay, and the social. This acceptance must be there, but what are the questions which you need to uh, consider concretely? Technology used and experts, resource availability, very good. That's the thing. You are talking about a village. In village, the resources uh, are not uh, very much um, available or some of them are available. So uh, let's talk about technical resources. Uh, if I make it very complicated, very high tech, um, uh, and uh, if something uh, happens to that, let's say some failure is there, some sensor fails, uh, who will go and uh, really repair in the remote village if someone will go then he will charge like anything uh, so will this plant be able to afford that resource availability of course what what else huh? what else will you consider when you talk about such kind of plant from um, the pre feasibility point of view I hope my question is clear here. Yeah? Target market, of course, sir. Uh, one of the, uh, again, uh, the, so we, we model it out. I like the Hindi word more than English word, but uh, there's something called symbiotic relationship. Uh, in Hindi, we call it Sahajivta. So I'm dependent on someone and someone is dependent on us. So the raw material supplier is dependent on us. <clears throat> uh, uh, sorry, we are dependent on raw material supplier from biogas point of view, but uh, the raw material supplier are dependent on us from the gas point of view. So in case they increase the raw material price, I will increase the gas price. So, th so that's why I use the word Sahajita, the symbiotic relationship. But definitely um, uh, the uh, consumer is very, very, very important. Uh, target market is very uh, important. Uh, but this, is, this was one of the modeling which we did uh, from, socially, uh, so, uh, from social point of view uh, in the pre-feasibility stage itself support system to be created mm. yeah of course um, um i don't know what you mean but if you mean uh, the manpower support uh, definitely the manpower support needs to be um, created and uh, the rural engineering or the social engineering is very beautiful and uh, i almost cried in fact i am telling you so if you if you involve a guy from day zero in rural india believe me this guy will never leave the job never leave the plant and uh, just because he will consider this plant as if it's his um, own baby. Um, uh, so the resource or the support system in village or the whole dynamics work in a very different manner. Collecting, uh, collecting uh, dung nearby village even after 10 years. Uh, collection of dung, uh, of course, of course. Um, uh, so short-term planning, long-term planning because ultimately the raw material, that's what I was telling you, raw material is the key. So the raw material availability uh, has to be ensured uh, 
so that's a good point. So at that time, uh, we made it multi-feed. So even though dung is not available, but uh, if you have kitchen waste, if you have agriculture waste, so that also could be uh, considered transportation availability. Mm, I think you mean transportation availability of the raw material. Uh, uh, if yes, then uh, we did in two manner uh, because village was not so big. People used to come um, and uh, give us the dung like this. But we also may <coughs> came up with <coughs> sorry some local entrepreneurs. <coughs> uh, who could make the collection center and on their bullock cart itself uh, they used to bring the dung huh? but of course transportation availability business ecosystem between biogas plant and villages of course <coughs> so basically here uh, we got 80 percent from the government uh 10 percent we uh, we put and 10 percent had to come from the village villagers uh, but all of you can imagine villagers will never give you money, but what villagers could give villagers could give the shramdan. Uh, they could actually work for the plant and at the end we had to give more money actually to the villagers because they worked uh, more than what, what was uh, required, uh, but that was one of the financial modeling which we did. Um, SHGs and APEX body support to create the sustainability. Of course, of course, self-help groups are always better huh? and uh, very active and um, uh, it depends on which village you are. Uh, but my personal experience is very uh, good. Self-help groups are really, really very active. Huh? Executive and device transportation. Yes, device transportation is one thing and uh, more than uh, device transportation because at the beginning you can do everything uh, to, uh, you know, take the device over there and to or, you know, construct. Um, but uh, the operation and maintenance part is more important of the devices huh? and that's why you need to be sure that you are making the system very simple and robust uh, so that the local villages can um, you know take care of the small rectification. Uh, should consider already existing dung seller among villages who is affected by bank. Uh, so basically when you do the social modeling uh, uh, this is very good actually. Again, this point is very good. Um, uh, all these are pre feasibility points. I'm happy to see. Um, of course, then it should not happen that on one hand you are uh, doing something, but um, on other hand, uh, there will be a social imbalance. And you see, this was exactly my point, the social feasibility. Uh, and this is what you do at the beginning. Uh, how much dung uh, is available or extra dung is available? What are they doing uh, with the dung at the moment? Will they be selling to you or will they not be uh, interested? Uh, so many times it happens in India that um, you put the industry uh, just by assuming that the raw material is very cheap in that area. But as soon as uh, you come out with the industry, people say, uh -huh, now industry is there, so they will be forced to pay any price I will ask. And this is how the raw material price um, uh, normally shoots up and which is not good. That's why I use the word uh, symbiotic uh, or symbiosis or symbiotic relationship uh, because here uh, both consumer and supplier are interlinked huh? um, and uh, which is one of the beautiful things. But definitely uh, the ex existing dung um, sellers uh, mapping is required in case uh, this is valid for that particular village. Yes, please, what else? Uh, parallel system of dairy farming um, also could be created if there are many cows. Of course, uh, I mean, um, I'm just talking about one vertical. So basically, this was one of my point um, at the beginning that you need to consider the whole value chain. Uh, so if I consider the value chain of, uh, let's say, cattle, then you are right. Yeah? Uh, then what is happening with the milk, what is happening with other things. This is a very beautiful point what you are uh, saying. but. I wanted to play a role only uh, towards um, the cow dung or cattle dung only, uh, but of course the dairy is another um, uh, vertical uh, which can be considered separately. But here uh, the role was definitely confined towards uh, cow dung only. Uh, in this particular place, um, Amul was or it was Sumul actually, uh, Surat Milk Union Limited. It was under Amul only, uh, and they were collecting the milk, so the system was already in place. Very good. Huh? Organic and safe farming by vermi composting. Uh, I mean, at the beginning, all these farmers, they were really hesitant and they were not very uh, sure what they are doing or what we are doing. But after three years, the local gingers, which they were uh, producing, 
they could fetch three times more money uh, than they were actually earlier getting um, and they were more than happy when you uh, when i used to go to that village afterwards they were welcoming like anything so uh, so definitely organic farming etc the implementation is a challenge all the time especially at the beginning but definitely uh, that um, caters to the sector of um, um, whole organic thing organic food what we are talking at the moment okay i think um, uh, good um, uh, we are good to go to the next slide and then i think there are only a couple of slides uh, we are we just have um, uh, less than 10 minutes left so i will finish it and then uh, then if you still have some question i would love to answer that so anyway uh, we already talked about it um, all these steps um, this was um, another product um, so what we did uh, we uh, converted the 40 feet um, container, even the 20 feet uh, old shipping container into a biogas plant and uh, we put the biogas balloon, you can see, and then we even uh, went for the hybrid. Someone was talking about hybrid at the beginning here. Uh, we even took help of solar photovoltaic and uh, uh, windmill, uh, but the time was a problem, uh, to be honest. Um, I did it in 2009 and uh, for uh, for six years, actually, I could not even sell one. It was not at all possible. Uh, then in 2015, someone came to me and he said that, hey, I, you already have a product, why don't you license to me? And then this guy could really um, ensure uh, that almost all the, uh, how do you say, railway station in India, of course, uh, still there are many which are missing. Uh, the, he started putting in Jaipur, he started putting in Tumkur, in Delhi, there, it's at Metro. Uh, then he started putting it like anything. But at that time, the mistake which I personally did, I considered everything, but I didn't consider the time. Uh, it was quite um, quite ahead of uh, time. What was the organization registration to do this? I didn't get your question. What was the organization registration to do this? What is not profit? Not profit organization NGO, just write NPO or NGO. Uh, they do um, all the work, uh, not with the motive of um, uh, profit. Huh? They want to um, they want to run the organization from charity point of view, like Akshay Patra, huh? uh, like ISKCON. Uh, these are not for profit. So you guys, I think you have private limited or partnership or <clears throat> I don't know LLP. Uh, so these are four profits that at the end of the year in your balance sheet uh, you have a, a profit and which you <clears throat> share among your uh, shareholder uh, in a limited manner it depends on the company policy uh, but that's a different question so maybe you can keep writing your question i will take at the end i would not like to jump <coughs> from the main one but keep writing the question but i will answer it after the um, after a couple of slides now okay uh, anyway i was talking about uh, this uh, uh, bio box uh, one of the problems uh, with me was that when I did the pre-feasibility, I didn't consider that it's well ahead of time. I didn't consider any uh, government help, which was good in fact, uh, but uh, the time was a crucial factor where I personally failed. And uh, now it's not a problem. Now it's even in, uh, this is uh, the upgraded version of this is also installed in Rashpati Bhavan uh, in President House. Um, um, in Noida, almost every sector is going to have this one. Already they have installed three uh, three such units uh, in Nada itself, so, uh, the upgraded one actually. Yeah. Uh, but this was ahead of the time. So you need to be very um, uh, practical um, uh, in pre-feasibility stage itself that the idea which you are going to float, it should not happen that you are way ahead of the uh, time. If it happens, then perhaps people will appreciate you. Maybe you get a um, uh, uh, lot of articles in newspaper, and um, everywhere, but at the end of the day, the success for an entrepreneur is defined from the money point of view. I still remember in 2009, um, um, there was a competition, Power of Ideas, um, and I put uh, this idea and, in the, and I, I won that competition. And uh, in the whole page of Economic Times, my photo was there, I was very happy, okay, something very, very good, and when I could not sell it, it was almost like a bankruptcy, and then I understood that you know, uh, it's better to talk as a successful um, uh, businessman instead of talking uh, and just uh, creating a big um, uh, big noise. So that was another thing. So in pre-feasibility, you have to be very, very, very practical. That's as simple as it. And that's the whole idea of putting this slide down. 
Okay, uh, I think I'm uh, at the end of the slide now, huh? and it's almost like a, a summary um, of whatsoever uh, we talked again and again and again from pre feasibility point of view. Uh, but um, here, the thinking, um, thinking, um, what we are emphasizing is that you need to think critically. Uh, you need to start. You need to really um, analyze the external and internal um, uh, factors. You need to really see your strategy uh, from the business point of view. Uh, at the same time, you need to talk about the corporate strategy here. Uh, you need to uh, talk about the you know, talk about implementation strategy and everything. There can be many, many uh, other factors uh, which you can uh, incorporate. Huh? Uh, but the question which you need to ask to yourself, can business risk be minimized by free feasibility? Why, why not? So uh, with this question uh, and this points, actually, I would like to um, end my presentation um, with a great line of Mahatma. Common sense is the realized sense of proportion. So I would say uh, when you are talking about the sense of proportion, and uh, this is what pre-feasibility stands for, this is what actually at the end of the day the whole business um, idea stands for, that you have to, uh, you have, to have a, a realized sense of proportion, um, um, and that's what is called common sense uh, many times. Yeah. Uh, so with this, I will end my formal presentation. Thanks for your patient uh, listening. Uh, and uh, uh, whatever uh, question you have, uh, maybe I can take the question. Um, so please start typing into it. If I already, if you already wrote something, I would like to have a look. Same like steam engine, um, as its inventor had waited for 11 years after developing product. Of course, uh, I mean, uh, uh, see, when you are talking about 100 years before or something, yeah, the time was very, very different. I don't think we can compare it um, with the present time. Uh, but the lesson we can learn, um, and then we can ensure that we don't do the same mistake. That's why the case studies are there. Um, uh, so agree with you, uh, but I think now we can, uh, you can move really fast in comparison to uh, that time. Uh, so that's one of the main difference. After refinement and compression, biogas still contains impurity. Um, someone asked a technical question about biogas. Uh, so just to tell you, uh, biogas, uh, normally you take out the uh, CO2 uh, and then you take out um, H2S and moisture. If you have ammonia, then you take it out. So the process is very established. And uh, I, I was telling you that government of India launched this 75,000 crore package um, around two and a half years ago. So this bio CNG is very established now. Um, uh, I was one of the very lucky one. I brought this technology to India 11, 11 years ago. Uh, Kalamji uh, personally came and checked everything here um, near Baroda. Uh, so we were uh, more than happy um, uh, to do that. But BioCNG, uh, the, the technology is established very much. There is nothing uh, from the technology point of view. If you want to see any of the plant, um, uh, you can just uh, write me an email. Uh, you can see my email ID over here. We'll be more than happy to um, make sure that you visit one BioCNG plant. But that's um, that's not the topic for today. Yes, please. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, so if you don't have any question, uh, then uh, it's uh, it's already one o'clock. Huh? So I'd like to thank you again. Huh? But it's still, in case you have any question, feel free to write me um, an email. Email is always a better. Uh, way to communicate, um, uh, especially uh, for me. Huh? Uh, please feel free, and uh, I wish you all the best. Huh? And uh, just once again, I'm repeating the same sentence with what I started. Uh, I hope you got a feel about the whole pre-feasibility thing. Uh, think in a very um, uh, practical manner. Apply the knowledge, huh? and um, just be brave enough to say no uh, in case um, uh, in case uh, it, it doesn't fit with your uh, uh, boundary conditions. Huh? It's as simple as it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.